What's going on ladies and gents and welcome back to a brand new video. This is WebDev Journey and today we're going to be uh, connecting our application to a mongoose or mongoose, a MongoDB. All right. Uh, and we're going to be using an online platform for our MongoDB server. There are many things you could do out there. We could use Docker, you could use, uh, you could do it on your local host, but I'm just going to save us the trouble and just use an online platform. And we've already explored that as well with MLab. But we're going to be using another one, you know, just to keep things fresh. And that's MongoDB.com. I will have that in the description down below. Just create an account. It's completely free. And once you do, you should see this dashboard right off the bat. So once you do that, let's build a cluster. As you can see, I don't have any cluster. So this is going to be my first time. Well, not my first time, but this is going to be the first time for this. Um, what's it called? God. For this user, I guess, that's going to be doing it. Anyways, screw it. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Ignore me. Let's build a cluster, all right? And we're going to go for free. We don't want to pay anything. Unless you do, then go ahead. I'm, I'm going to rename my cluster to Advanced Express. You don't have to name that. You can name it whatever you want. But, yeah. Leave everything else default and let's create that cluster. Now, creating this cluster is going to take about three minutes. It says so right here. So I'll come back in around three minutes. All right. Now it's up. It's been about three minutes for me. Um, now what we want to do is create collection. So we, all we have to do is head over to collections and then add my own data. You could add a, a collection of a sample data that MongoDB will generate for you. But I want to do my own data and our database name i'm gonna do three obviously as you can see right here i'm gonna do one for production with the collection name users because we are going to need some users Ooh, unexpected what let me go to production and users create okay why am i getting errors hold on there it is i don't know why i just had to refresh my page i don't know why uh but anyways and let's create two more uh for test users and then one more for development with users inside of them. All right, now that we have that, let's create an actual user so that way we could actually log in to our database. So to do that, we go to database access for security, under security, add a new one. We're going to do the password authentication method. You could use any other, the other two if you want to, but I'm not. So I'm gonna just do advanced user. And I'm going to just auto generate a secure password. Copy that. And let's actually put this inside of here. So that way we don't forget. All right. And I'm going to add a user. Yes. Okay. I'm going to do one more security thing. And that is uh, I'm going to actually whitelist my I, my I, IP address. Uh, so only people, I, well, you could actually read, configure with which IP addresses can you access your cluster? And I just want to add my IP. I can't even talk. I just want to add my IP address so that way nobody but except anybody with my IP address could actually write and read from my clusters. So I'm going to just click right here, add current IP address, and confirm. And this is going to take a while, so let's not even worry about that. And let's go to our. Oh, wow, not there. Let's actually go to clusters again because now we need the connection string. So let's click on connect and connect your application. And I'm just copy this. This is the actual string we're going to be using. So just copy that. Now let's go over here and paste that sucker right up there. Paste it. And I'm going to copy. I'm going to get rid of this so that way we can see everything. Copy this password because the password is going to be in here. And then our DB name, which we have three production get rid of this now and just do this two more times we got production we got test and then we got development okay now we just want to include these us uh, connection strings to our application so that way we could actually connect to our db dbs <laughs> All right, let's go to, um, uh, not there, the config, server, config, and index. 
So as you can see, I'm actually using process.envs for our uh, connection strings. I want to store our connection streams, our connection strings into environment variables. This is kind of standard. Uh, you you want to do that. Uh, you don't want to uh, people to know your. You don't have. You don't want to have these strings somewhere in this file that anybody could actually read. You want them to have. You want to have them in a environment variable. So we're actually doing that here and we're actually using a module called dot env or a package called dot env. Basically anything inside of a dot env file gets converted into a uh, environment variable and all it needs is a key value pair. That's it. It's pretty cool and it's pretty simple. So I already have a dot env. Let me just rename this to dot env. Now, if you go in here, you see that we have three things, only the keys to our key value pair. And all we need to provide is the value. So I'm just copy this. Oh boy. Copy that. Paste it there and then just add them to the appropriate place. Which, which is this one? Production. So this one goes to the production string. This one goes to the test down here and the last one goes to development paste the control save this now and for another good measure you don't want to uh, upload dot the dot env file to github so you want to ignore that which I've already done for you guys I'm for you guys I'm just letting you know that you want to ignore it so that way github doesn't have this dot env file all right, now that we have that, now it's actually time to test out if we have connection to those things. Uh, I already did it. Let me clear this. All right here, clear. And I already created scripts that helps us determine if those connection strings are correct or not, okay? And we're gonna be using npx mocha test db connect so we're actually just testing if those strings are correct or not. And as you can see, you could t you could see what we're testing. So we're just testing if if we have a development for configurations and production testing and also down here if it's reachable or not. So development, test and production are all reachable which means that it works. We those connection strings were correct. And you could exact you could see what I'm doing here if you go to test db connection or connect.js you can see what I'm doing right here how I'm connect or how I'm actually doing those test cases I'm not going to be go going over test cases in this series at all nothing about testing I just have these scripts to help us out to see if we're gonna have problems beforehand okay and so far we don't have any problems with our connection so we could go on and you know connect to our databases so I'm gonna create another inside of server. I'm gonna create another file or folder called lib. Yes, lib. Why not? Not inside. Sorry, not inside. I want it inside the server, and not in config. All right, inside of lib, I'm gonna create another file called db.js. Now we want to make a connection to our Mongo DB. And for that, we're going to be using mongoose. So we do need to install that npm i dash dash save mongoose up here, const mongoose. It's going to equal require, oops, mongoose. And what I want to do is just export module.exports.connect. Oh, sorry, it's going to equal and we're going to make this a async uh, function. So DSN and don't worry, I will be uh, telling you what I'm doing. Let me just do this first and we're going to just return mongoose.connect with the DSN and we're going to be adding some options. New UR, oh, new URL parser set that to true. Okay, so basically we're just uh, exporting our 
uh, mongoose.connect. And the reason why, I think I already told you, the reason why I, I did the db.js here is because everything dealing with the database, I just want to isolate that in its own file. And that file being the db.js. Okay. Now we could actually use this connect, this Mongo connect over here in our bin. Let me get, clear this out. Bin www includes this right here. So const. I don't know why I couldn't just type in st. I have no idea. db equals require. And let's let's include that file that we just created. Uh, inside server, inside lib, and db. Awesome. And I'm gonna include this right before we actually connect to our server, which is right here, or listen to our server. Sorry. So right here, db dot connect because we exported connect, which does all of this, and all we have to do is just pass in the DSN. So connect, and what I'm gonna do is pass in the config dot database dot dsn and uh let me just do this first and then i'll explain what what happened there i actually may explain it right now so config dot database dot dsn you already know it has here it is our config database dsn it has the connection string to that how do we know what it is if it's a development or if it's uh, the production or what it is? Well, if you go back over here on top config, we're actually passing in the uh, process environment variable, the node ENV. Okay. So if we actually have this and we actually set it up, then it should be a development or a test. But since we didn't set it up yet, we're going to just default to development. So this is actually passing in the development config database DSN. So once it connects, what I want to do is just do a console dot log connected, connected to Mongo DB. And what I'm going to do here is grab this and paste it in there. Dot catch. If there's an error, error what i'm gonna do is console dot error and spit out the error Ugh. Oh, i did this wrong okay now grab this paste that okay Control save that. Cool, cool, cool. So let's start this up and see if it works. So NP or not NPM or FPX. Uh, NPM start. And we got connected to MongoDB and listening to port 3000. Do we do have a deprecation warning? Let's just get rid of that. And I'm just copy this back in our DB, I'm adding in a new option, just that right there. And let's try it again. NPM start, and we shouldn't have any warnings. There you go. Now we're connected to MongoDB listening on port 3000. Pretty awesome. All right, guys, that was it for this video. All I wanted to do was just connect our application to Mongoose or Mongoose. I keep on saying Mongoose. Connect our application to Mongo uh, using an online platform, which we've done. So I hope you learned something in this video or at least uh, get a recap on how to do some stuff because I explained how to connect with connect to MongoDB uh, a few times now. So yeah, anyways, if you liked the video, please leave a like or hit that like button, leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you have not. In the next video, we are going to be creating a schema, you know, using bcrypt to hash our passwords and, you know, uh, creating a registration route. So that way we could, you know, create our users for, for, for the very first time. And that's in the next video. That yeah, is a lot for the next video. But thank you guys for watching my video. I really do appreciate you spending your time watching my videos. It means a lot to me. So thank you guys. And I will see you in the next video. 
Bye.